uh, Charles Harrell here. I'm going to do my first video tutorial uh, for a good friend Braden. He wants to know how I created my intro. Uh, this is the intro which you've just seen. So that was actually pretty simple. I had a, a good idea of what I wanted to do. I wanted something clean but edgy, uh, something blue, because uh, you know obviously Blue Monkey Entertainment is a big part of who I am, uh, and so I wanted to create something really fun. So uh, let's start it off. First things first, we want to go over the different uh, things that I have inside this video, the different um, items. Uh, first thing is the grunge texture. This I got off the of video co-pilot from Riot Gear. Uh, along with the extension video that you saw towards the end, uh, this little line that just kind of creeps right through, um, that got from Riot Gear, as well as the arrows. Now, there was three different arrows that I were looking at, but I ended up only choosing two of the arrows. Here's one arrow, which you do see in the video. Here's another arrow. And here is the third arrow. This is the one that I chose. So the second one, I'll go ahead and delete that out of this uh, project file so there's no confusion as to where that's going to go. All right, so the first things first, we're going to drag this texture into the um, composition, which I already have. Uh, now, when you did see the texture, it was gray and brown. What I did was I used a filter from Video Copilot called uh, Film Magic Pro. In this little area right over here, uh, I want to type underscore and then scroll down to enhance with cool and once I place it over top of here in my effects palette it automatically drops uh, certain uh, effects that will automatically make it that blue filter so once we get that in the next thing is to create um, the atmosphere uh, the freezing type of uh, smoky texture that was inside of it and that is just a simple um, atmosphere from video copilot as well uh, I got this from action essentials too uh, all I did with this was pretty much just drop it inside the composition and just let it run its course and I rotated it 22 degrees negative so that instead of the the smoke being at like this kind of angle and it would be in the, the third, the, the, the bottom uh, corner of the, the video, I made it kind of level with the bottom so that it smoked around the whole video. Uh, that's just one little technique that I learned uh, with rotating certain presets that you already get. So once we get that in, the next step is to figure out what we want to place inside the video uh, text-wise. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn on these layers. Uh, turn on Welcome to, and this was the first thing you saw. Uh, nice little graphic, it just slides in. You see it kind of, it's a 3D object, so it kind of like comes in like a door. And then the second one is smaller, so you can't really notice for two, but that one slides in like a door as well. So what I did was, uh, first thing is you want to turn uh, motion blur on your comp. You want to turn that on, and then you want to create the the text by using the text tool up here. You just type in welcome, figure out your font, and uh, I'm going to press the letter U on my keyboard while I'm selected on welcome so it can bring down all the keyframes that I'm working with. Okay. So the first thing we wanted to work with was orientation. Uh, right now we want to make it invisible as if it's not there. You see this red line just so you as the editor know it's there, but when the video is playing in real time, they don't see that. Uh, so what I do is I turn the opacity down to zero, and I go to what keyframe is this right here. This is uh, keyframe number four out of uh, one second, or frame four out of one second, um, and I turn the opacity down to zero, and then I go one frame over, and I turn the opacity all the way up to 100 so that um, you know, people can see it, because if I don't do that, if I delete this right here, then you can see it. Now, you can't really see it because of the red line, but if I play the video real time, there's going to be a line right there for four frames, and then welcome comes in. So let's undo that and forget about that. Um, so you want to have this at 100, and then you can leave it at 100 for the rest, because once uh, this part right here comes up, the welcome is actually going to disappear. It's going to be gone forever, and that's good. So the second thing we want to do is work on our orientation. I use the Y coordinates because this allows me to move it left and right as like a door opening. I moved it to 78 degrees because at the position it is right there, um, 
that's going to be the best point for it to be almost impossible to see. But because motion blur is on, um, you can kind of see a little bit of the letters right here, but they kind of blend in with the smoke so nobody really notices. Then I go five frames over to 10, and that's when I bring back the Y axis to zero, and that creates the closing door effect. Boom. And then I repeat that with two as well, but I do that the reverse direction. So same method. Then we have Charles Hero popping in. Now, what you don't notice while Charles Hero pops in is Welcome actually gets squished really fast. Why is that? Because Charles Hero drops from the ceiling and the floor. Boom. Now you can kind of see it, and then once Charles Hero settles, it's gone. Really simple. Um, that's simple keyframing at its best. That's just moving it from the top to the bottom. So let me show you how that looks. I want to go a few keyframes back at one second and five frames and I start the position, let me zoom out of here a little bit, I start Charles all the way up here and I keyframe the position of Charles up here and then I move five frames forward to where I want him to stop and then I just pretty much take him from the top and I just drag him down here and then I leave him where I want him to be and then I let that animate. Also with the motion blur on it creates that blur effect. I duplicate this and add it onto Charles or Hero actually my last name and then they both fly at the same time and that's how that gets done. Um, now moving into the really cool part, the part that I really liked the most um, was when Charles Hero kind of shrunk a little bit and then you see official channel pop up. That was again using the, the, the door effect where the item or the, the text is invisible and then it just slides out. Uh, but this time it kind of like slides from underneath of Charles Hero, right underneath this line and just kind of like, like a page flip, just flips right down. So how did I do that? I'm going to go all the way up to two seconds. And before two seconds actually happens, you're going to see Charles and Hero kind of like shrink down. So what I did is I just, just took the scale option, keyframed on this uh, keyframe, which is a, a minute or one second and 25 frames, put the size it was at, and then went to two seconds and then dropped it down to a little smaller. And then it just automatically fit into place. But now we got to work on official channel. So the same opacity rule applied with this one because, uh, again, I don't want there to be a line sitting there and somebody's like, what is that line? And then all of a sudden they see what happens. So the frame before I'm ready for it to be visible, which is at 1 second and 29 frames, I make it a zero opacity. Then we move over to 2 seconds and make it 100 opacity. And at that same frame, we take the orientation and keyframe it at 266 degrees on the x-axis. This will allow Charles Hero to, we can't even see it, where did it go? Oh, it's not even highlighted, let me turn it on. Okay, this axis allows it to move forward and backwards like a little swing. You see that? So let's undo that, go back to the beginning, that we want it to be at 266. So right now I turn it on, you see the red line, and then as it comes in, it just slides down. Boom, and then it's there. And then Jack, that just plays for a few seconds. Now I made this a little longer so that when I went into Final Cut and added the soundtrack, I can cut out whatever space I needed to fit the soundtrack. So I made it last five whole seconds. Okay guys, bear with me, we're almost done. Uh, I've already uh, turned on the rest of the layers, extensions, the two arrows, and then uh, three text layers, tails, of an editor. All right, first thing we want to do is we want to animate the arrows coming in and timing the text to land with the arrows. So each arrow takes about two seconds to animate completely. So the first item we want to animate right after the arrow hits is tails. Okay. Now, before Tails actually comes through, I want you to see something carefully. Look at the tip of the arrow. You see how it gets larger? As soon as it gets to its largest point, we use the same rules or the same uh, um, things that we did with Official Channel and Welcome to the animation uh, 
uh, techniques with those we use for tales of an editor and we just animate them according to you know what's going on here so for this case we want tails to animate from left to right and as soon as the arrow hits it it comes in then about a second later while the second arrow is starting to come in uh, we want to animate of and to drop down just like we did in uh, official channels and that just drops down like so and then about another second later at nine second mark we want editor to pop in so remember when I said that each arrow takes about two seconds I timed it to where at seven once tails come in we have the second arrow already starting to to travel forward by the time that nine o'clock or nine second hits you're gonna see right at the end you see the arrow got bigger and then boom editor pops in and that's how we animate that and then just for final touches uh, pull the extension in so it could just kinda like slide underneath like so and create that nice little cool effect um, just to give it some more character um, and then last but not least we want to well not last because after I show you how you do this um, this animation where uh, each item kinda like zooms out into the screen uh, we have to figure out how to do that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe everything. Um, oh man, I just deleted something on accident. I was trying to delete a keyframe and I deleted the wrong thing. Okay, we're good to go now. Um, so first thing we want to do is you want to go to the item that you want to keyframe. Now I have tails selected. It's the last item that gets keyframed, uh, but it's okay. You know, it's uh, uh, you can apply the same motion to every single item but you got to do it, um, I used uh, the same motion um, every frame later, so everything moved at a different time to create more of character, more, um, you know, make it fun, make it spunky. Uh, so what we do is you want to go to the position, keyframe the current position, and then I went five seconds later, towards the end, um, right up here, and then I went into the Z space, uh, made it a, a, a 3D object, and went negative 1568. Now the reason why I went negative is because when you make it negative it kinda makes it zoom forward. Uh, when you make it a positive uh, the object will zoom backwards and get smaller uh, and then eventually disappear. But that's the effects we use for that and uh, it just kinda like went forward. And so that's how you do the animation and you just position each one strategically to move however fast you want but that's how I did mine a frame later for each one. Um, and now going into the design. I didn't explain the design earlier. I know you're probably wondering how I did that. Uh, let's select the layer. We're going to select tails. Uh, first thing I did was choose ramp. You go here into effects and presets. You want to click X and then start typing ramp. You want to double click ramp and then it's going to pop up. Um, start colors, going to be black, typical and then end color is going to be the typical white. It's always that way, but you could choose whatever colors you want. I simply chose white for the start color, and that's what you see on the top. And then I chose a nice, you know, um, blue. It's a little uh, soft, but it's, you know, it's it's nice blue that I like. Um, and so what we did was we take the, the ramp coordinates, which are, let me move this box over a little bit so you can see better. Uh, these are the ramp coordinates. Uh, this allows you to figure out how close to the center of the, the object is that you're trying to get the gradient. Um, if I move this down, or I move the cursor to the right, it's going to go down. And you see if I move it to the left, it's going to go up. And this just helps you figure out whatever uh, gradient you want. Play with the settings, figure out what you like, and make what you want. The second part of it is I put a drop shadow on. You may not really notice a drop shadow, but it's there. Uh, and it just helps define the letters just a little more. And for this, I just made the opacity 100, the distance 2, and the softness 2. All right. And so that's my tutorial on how to create a title intro. So I hope you like it. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message at contact at charlesherode.com. Or you can send me a message in my inbox. I'm here whenever you need me to. Thank you for watching and have a good one.